Welcome to the 8th of 13 SPSS video tutorials accompanying the first edition of the text, Introduction to Statistics for Social Sciences. We'll be using IBM SPSS Statistics version 19 for this tutorial. If you are running a different version of the software, you may notice some slight differences. In this tutorial, we will cover how to obtain confidence intervals for means and proportions. Both of these topics are covered in Chapter 8 of the text. For this tutorial, you will need the file Chapter 8 Video Tutorial Data.sav. This dataset consists of 31 respondents and 5 variables. The variables include age, income, gender, cannabis, and drive. The income variable represents the respondent's monthly income in dollars. The gender variable is coded such that 0 equals male and 1 equals female. The cannabis variable is a measure of whether the respondent has used cannabis at least once in their lifetime, with no coded as 0 and yes coded as 1. Finally, the variable drive is a measure of whether the respondent has ever driven a vehicle after taking cannabis with no coded as 0 and yes coded as 1. When you want to obtain the confidence interval for a mean or proportion, the explore function of the analyze command will usually provide what you are looking for. We get to the explore function by going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. The explore function provides us with descriptive statistics, confidence intervals, and three types of plots. To obtain these, we select our variable of interest and then move it into the dependent list box. Then, by selecting the statistics option, we can see that by default, descriptive statistics has been selected and the confidence interval has been set for 95%. At this point, we will ignore the other options in this window and press Continue. Although for this tutorial we are not interested in the plots, by pressing the Plots button, you can see that box plots, stem and leaf plots, and histograms can be obtained through this option. Since we are only interested in the confidence intervals, we will click the radio button beside the Statistics Display option and then press OK. In the output, we are provided with measures of central tendency, dispersion, and shape. However, what we are interested in for this tutorial is the mean and the 95% confidence interval. SPSS provides us with the standard error that is used to calculate the lower and upper bound of the confidence interval. Since the population standard deviation is unknown, the standard error is calculated as the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. The lower and upper bound of the confidence interval are then calculated as the sample mean plus or minus the critical value of t, which at 30 degrees of freedom is 2.042, times the standard error of the mean. SPSS does not have a point-and-click method to obtain the confidence interval of a proportion. Therefore, unless we use SPSS syntax, which is not always the easiest to do, the best we can do in SPSS is to get an approximate value of the confidence interval. To do this, you need to ensure that your variable of interest is coded as either a 0 or 1, with 1 being the category that you are interested in estimating the proportion for. This is because when we use the explore function, SPSS will estimate the mean value of the responses. So for example, if we are interested in obtaining an approximate value of the confidence interval of the proportion of those who have used cannabis at some point in their life, we will want to code the yes category as 1 so that the mean will be the proportion of those with a code of 1. We can then follow the same process as our previous example using the explore function.
Since we coded the data as 0 equals no and 1 equals yes, the mean value will be the proportion of those who have used cannabis at least once in their lifetime. We can also see that we are given a standard error and the 95% confidence interval. There are two reasons why we say this is only an approximate method. First, the standard error is calculated as the standard error of the mean as shown in equation 8.15 of page 224 of the text and not as the standard error of the proportion as shown in equation 8.28 of page 232 of the text. Second, the critical value of t at 30 degrees of freedom is used in the calculation rather than a z value, meaning that rather than 1.96 times the standard error, the confidence interval is being calculated as 2.042 times the standard error. Thus, the lower bound should be 0.16 rather than 0.15, and the upper bound should be 0.48 rather than 0.50. In short, when using this method in SPSS for estimating the confidence interval of a proportion, keep in mind that it is only an approximate value. This brings us to the end of the SPSS video tutorial for Chapter 8. We hope that you have found this tutorial to be useful. In the next tutorial, we will look at how to conduct a one-sample t-test in SPSS.